What's up guys, we're back with another Mythic Legions Aerithair Wave review, taking a look at one of the, I guess kind of the oddball characters in this particular wave because it's so heavily demon focused, there aren't a lot of regular characters. So we're taking a look today at Magnus, uh, one of the uh, commanders for the Red Shield soldiers. And this guy looks really good. I'm actually very, very interested to see what's going on with this particular figure and to see what uh, some new parts hold for the line in general. Of course, he comes on our standard Mythic Legion style packaging for a single figure. So you've got the figure there in the window. We do have a bio card for Magnus uh, there on the side panel. And then the back of the box has our cross cell, our new Aerithir backer card artwork, as well as the Mythos write-up. So let's do it. Let's pull this guy out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Magnus figure, one of the few, you know, good guys when it comes to this wave, since it's such a heavy evil wave, which I'm not upset about at all. We've got a pretty interesting figure here. So we've got new parts. Uh, we've got just in, in general, a really interesting look. And I've got a very uh, heavy interest in this figure because, and let's be honest here, we all know this guy is going to be the base for the inevitable Fisto homage figure uh, when it comes to doing more Motu tributes. We just know it, right? I mean, that head almost looks like it was made for them to do that. So I'm really looking forward to that whenever they get around to it. Well, let's get started, see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. He is, of course, a 1.0 figure uh, for all intents and purposes. So if you know one, you pretty much know them all. But let's give him his due. So we've got a head that can look really far up. It does look kind of odd because he's got such a big gap there, but if you need to get him looking upwards, you can. He doesn't look down too much because he's got kind of a long face, especially with that beard. You've got really good tilt side to side and then full rotation. The neck also will rotate, uh, but the head of course can rotate on that ball. Arms go out at the shoulders. They of course rotate all the way around. We've got our single jointed rotating elbow in there. You've got rotation at the forearms. You've got hinges and rotation at the wrists themselves. Being a 1.0 style figure, he's got a, a sort of one piece brick torso. So he goes backwards. He goes forwards a little bit. He's got a really tall belt buckle uh, here. So it does impede him going forward more than, more than we're used to a little bit. Uh, we've got tilt side to side. And then you've got full rotation. His belt in general sits up pretty high. So it does sort of get in the way more than more than the norm. It's not too bad, but it is a little bit of a difference. Legs go out pretty much all the way. He's got the, uh, the sort of skirt pieces, so he'll stop him a little bit, but not too bad. You can kick forward, and then you can send those legs backward. You do have your thigh cut up there. We've got single rotating knees, and then we've got rotation, rocker, and you've got hinges down at those ankles. So in general, I mean, it's a very familiar figure. There's nothing Nothing out of the ordinary here, except for a little bit of hindrance at that waist area, just because he's got such a such a rigid and tall belt. But otherwise, it's a normal 1.0 style figure through and through. Now, visually, this guy is honestly quite compelling for me. And it comes down to just a couple of things. I mean, it's really the skirt pieces, the belt, and the torso, because... Without having that new torso in particular, I can instantly think of what they would have used for this guy. Uh, there, There is one main sort of armored torso that immediately comes to mind that we would have gotten had they not tooled up this new piece with all of these various plates and those rivets that hold it all together. And something about the gold with those silver rivets and the sort of dinginess and the dry brushing that's on there really works. Not to mention the fact that the gold paint that they use for this figure is super lustrous and incredibly vibrant, especially when, you know, you blast it with a lot of light like I've done here. There is, however, seemingly a running issue with this particular figure that we need to discuss. And that comes at the belt. So the belt has kind of like this fur piece. It's obviously not soft goods, but it's meant to mimic a, a fur piece with a leather strap around it. And then, like I said, you've got this monster buckle on the front, which I really do like the sculpt and the overall color scheme to that. But the brown paint in particular on the belt seems to have not cured correctly. I've seen a number of posts on, on Facebook and, uh, I don't know, Twitter, Instagram places, things like that, where if you touch it, you're going to get it on your hands. Like, yeah, like I've got, I've got it on my fingers right now. So it does seem to be rubbing off. Like it's not, it's not so bad that I feel like I'm removing tons of paint and that it's going to be paintless eventually, but it is definitely a thing. So uh, when you get him, 
be careful. And I've seen some folks going so far as to just stripping it down and repainting it. I am not even going to begin to do that, nor do I think I should have to. Uh, this problem is definitely just that, a problem. It's unfortunate because the belt does look really good. It's a nice new piece. Again, I really like the buckle, and I just like the idea of it being this big fur belt that he's got around him. It is what it is, though. There is definitely a problem with the paint. It does not seem to have cured correctly. Uh, maybe over time it's going to dry out. I don't really know enough about how that works to say yes or no, but I'm going to try to not touch it as much as possible and just to see what happens in the coming days now that he has been removed from package. Beyond that, which of course, you know, it is a thing. Beyond that, I do think he looks fantastic. Again, it's this color scheme. So the mostly gold, uh, very, you know, kind of like holy night almost type of look, uh, I think looks fantastic, especially with all of the wash that's in there. So there's of course a black wash that brings out all of the sculpt with all of that inset detail, but it's really this new torso. It's the skirt pieces and it's the belt that ties this figure together to make him look so unique amongst a lot of other armored human characters. You know, we've got similar pieces down here for the feet and for the legs, stuff we've seen before. Same with the arms, the uh, the gorget around his neck, stuff that we have seen for years at this point. But when you get new pieces like this, not to mention the color scheme for his little tabard skirt piece down there for the, the red shield aspect of his character with the red and the black, everything pops. It ties them together a little bit differently. And again, I just... I just love this new torso piece. I think it looks fantastic. I'm really happy with the overall design, and I'm curious to see uh, what they do with it going forward with other figures, because you know we're gonna see it time and again for a while. He is, of course, topped off with a new head sculpt, and again, this is the reason why I think we're gonna see him as Fisto down the road, but this head sculpt is tremendous. I think it looks really good. Uh, paint is clean. He looks very stern, but he looks like kind of like a no-nonsense character. And his bio kind of backs it up where he seems to be, you know, this heavy hitter, bruiser type of character, someone that you're not going to want to mess with on the battlefield. The hair is really well done. The beard is nice and thick and bushy. And of course, it's got tons of paint all over it. The eyes have a nice furrowed brow above them, so everything looks uh, like he's ready to throw down. But I'm really happy with this one. He does come with a helmeted head, but this is an instance where I'm probably going to be sticking with the unhelmeted uh, just to have this unique head sculpt on the shelf. And of course, I also think it looks really good at the same time. Now, as far as accessories goes, Magnus has kind of the standard spread. So we've got uh, pauldrons, we've got an extra head, and we've of course got weapons. So to start with our extra head and our pauldrons, he has kind of a standard fare of things. This is nothing really new, but you've got sort of the normal knight's bucket style helmet with the flourish at the top, which is done up in the gold color scheme to match his armor, but then it also has the red and the black to go along with the red shield uh, faction that he's a part of. I do think these look really good, especially if you want to turn him into something that isn't so unique of a character. You know, if you wanted to sort of part him out a little bit, you could definitely make this into just a sort of standard golden knight alongside a bunch of other golden knights if you if you go the route of getting a handful of this guy. So I do like that. Uh, I think the head sculpt looks good on here. Overall paint there looks nice as well. I do, however, have a concern. I'm not really sure if this is an issue or not on this figure, but the pauldrons on mine have an incredibly sloppy paint job. I don't know if that's supposed to be the case or not, but there is black all over uh, the red on both of them, which makes me wonder if it's supposed to be that way because it seems rather consistently inconsistent in that way. So I'm not too sure if anybody else out there has him. Uh, let me know. Again, this is so new that I haven't seen a lot of folks with these figures yet, so I don't truly know uh, what he's supposed to look like, but it really just looks like we've got some sort of a, a slop or mess, really, when it comes to his pauldrons. I do like the overall color scheme here, though. The black and the red with the gold piping does look really good, but at the same time, it does look kind of wonky to me. As far as weaponry goes, we have sort of the standard things for uh, for a figure. So you've got weapons, and of course we've got a shield. So he's got the curved blade here, silver blade with a with a gold and black uh, handle. We've got a axe, which we've seen before. Uh, none of this stuff is new. So you've got an axe with silver blade, gold inset detail with like sort of red gems in it. I do really like this. This will probably be what I prefer to use with him. We've got a red and black shield to go, of course, with our uh, color scheme for the red and black with the uh, with the faction that he represents here. We've also got, of course, the ever-present strap. And if you somehow need him for this guy, you've got 
more back adapters to add to your likely growing pile. So he does come with a lot of stuff here. I mean, it's still the standard kind of spread, but I do like the helmet they chose for him. I do like the pauldrons in general, but of course I am concerned that there is some wonkiness uh, going on with those paint apps. So yeah, overall, I think we've got a really solid figure here, if not for a couple drawbacks. And, and it's pretty obvious what, I, what I'm going to say at this point. The belt definitely has an issue, which hasn't proven to be too big of a problem for me. Just pay attention now that you know, but it's still a thing. Like, it's definitely an issue. It shouldn't have been that way, and yet here we are. And I do think the pauldrons have got some sort of wackiness going on with those paint apps. It is weird that both of them have the same kind of problem, but again, it doesn't also, it doesn't really look right either. Beyond that, though, I do really like all the new parts this guy brings to the table, from the torso to the belt to the new head sculpt. I think he's got a solid set of accessories that really work with this type of character, and I like the idea of having this sort of, uh, you know, big, bad, golden knight on the shelf. He's going to look really good uh, with characters like Ignatius or with Gideon, things like that, Faustia, things things of that nature, to sort of beef up your human ranks a little bit. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Aerithere Wave Magnus. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.